All right, welcome to day three again of our March Fasting and Prayers program. And we have been carrying in the presence of God under the theme, Oh Lord, deliver me from all trouble. And we have been looking at the pathways, the pathways that you need to stand upon, you need to, to manifest so you can be delivered from all troubles. Day one, we saw that for you to be delivered from all trouble, you must understand the kingdom mysteries of trusting in God. And we took time to go deep to understand what it means to trust in God and cultivating a heart that trusts in God. Day two, we were looking at the mystery. We were looking at uh, 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 the mystery where you can begin to walk in a dimension where you understand how to cry unto God. And we said this crying is not just the crying that you may understand in mere English. There is a kingdom way that you can cry unto God. And when you cry unto God, as the scripture says, the Bible says when the righteous cry, the Lord hears them and delivers them from all their trouble. Three, we are looking at the pathway of having a far above mentality. If you will live a life where God can deliver you from all your trouble, you need to have a far above mentality. Yes. This is a powerful kingdom secret that we need to understand as Christians. As a kingdom professional, as a kingdom entrepreneur, you need to have a far above mentality. And our key scripture for today, for today is Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, the Bible says, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Set your mind on who you are as a kingdom person, not on who you are based on the circumstances on earth. You cannot have a troubled mindset and expect to live above trouble. You cannot have a mindset that is buried into thinking about troubles alone and expect to live above trouble. It's not possible. The only way that you can live above trouble is for you to have a far above mentality. You cannot pray against trouble and still have a wrong mindset and expect deliverance. The Bible says without faith, we saw it on day one. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. How do you expect to be delivered from all trouble when your mind is buried into the trouble, when your mind is full of negativity. The mind is a legal spiritual platform that God uses to manifest through you. The mind is so important that there are scriptures in the Bible like this one that clearly talks about the kind of mindset that you should have. I want you to hear me very well. Your mindset is a spiritual platform. So you cannot pray against trouble and you are still buried in the trouble. Your mind is a platform for divine manifestation for your good. And at the same time, your mind can also be a demonic platform for the devil to use against you. So it is either you have a far above mentality that God 
can use to work with you in your favor, but you have the wrong mindset that the enemy can pass through and use to destroy your destiny. There are many people that when, when they should have been right now should have been a place of rest, a place of destiny manifestation, a place of greatness, a place of victory. But unfortunately, their mindset is not legal enough for a divine manifestation to happen in their life. I want you to go take time and study the great men in the Bible. Study the prophets in the Bible. Study the women in the Bible from Esther to Hannah. Study them. You will see that they had a far above mentality. The quality of your mindset is the platform for your spiritual manifestation. Hear me very well. There are you know, if you have been around the church, you will see very serious prayer warriors that they are broke. Serious prayer warriors that they are struggling. Serious prayer warriors that they are not living a transformed life according to the scripture. It is possible to be prayerful and not reflect Jesus Christ. The mind is so important. That the Bible talks about having the mind of Christ Jesus. The quality of your mindset is the platform for spiritual manifestation. If you will live a life that the Lord himself will deliver you from all your trouble, you need to have a far above mentality. You need to have a far above mentality. You need to claim your mind back. You need to dedicate your mind to the things that are from above. You will have to battle lies and confusion. You will have to battle bad habits and negative things that can negatively affect your spiritual manifestation. The Bible says, I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. We're going to go down, maybe right down to verse 22. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. As I always say, these verses are also for you to take time and study when you're alone and begin to understand with the help of the Holy Spirit what the Father wants you to dig deep from them. And the Bible says in verse 18, I pray that the eyes of your heart the eyes of your heart, the very center and the core of your being may be enlightened. The mind and the heart go hand in hand. So the apostle is telling the, the people in Ephesus that their eyes, the eyes of their heart must be enlightened. If you are going to live a life that is above trouble and you will experience deliverance of all trouble, you need to have an enlightened mindset. An enlightened mindset is a mindset that is far above. An enlightened mindset is a mindset that is flooded with the light of the Holy Spirit. It's a mindset that is led by the Holy Spirit. And that verse continues and say, so that you will be confident to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance. There are the, the, there are the riches of his glorious inheritance. You can only have access to the riches of Jesus Christ, glorious inheritance, when you have an enlightened mindset. There are many Christians who are not yet able to walk in the riches of his glorious inheritance because their mindset is not orchestrated. It's not designed in a way that they can accommodate the riches of his glorious inheritance. But when you have a far above mentality, you can begin to enjoy the riches of his glorious inheritance. 
And one of the riches of his glorious inheritance is deliverance from all trouble. Deliverance from all trouble. Hear me and hear me very well. The Lord needs you. I've told you many times. There need to be a partnership between divinity and humanity for a miracle to happen. God needs you. God needs your availability. That's why he loves you so much. And one of the ways to be available for God to use and do what he desires to do is for you to have a far above mentality. It's for you to have the mindset that is focused on the things above. Do you have a far above mentality? You are listening to me right now. You are the kind of person that every little trouble, you start complaining, you start crying, you start saying that my own big, my own don't finish, all of that. That is how you are pushing the presence of God away. The Holy Spirit manifests in a heart that is full of joy, peace, and happiness, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of trouble. But if you are in the midst of trouble and your mind, your mindset is negative, you are full of complaining and murmuring, that is double disaster. How can a troubled mind even pray? How can a negative mind even pray? How can a mind that is focused on all the wrong things happening around them even pray? No, I am not saying that the problem is not there. No, the problem is actually there. You are actually going to trouble. The, the difference is you have this far above mentality. The problem is there, yes, but you have this consciousness that you have a higher God. You have this consciousness that you have a higher power. You have this consciousness that no matter what is happening, you are coming out as a victor. You have this consciousness that you have a God that any time you call upon him, he will hear you and deliver you. A far above mentality is the mindset that understands that he serves a king of glory. And when the king speaks, authority goes out. And when authority goes out, every other thing, begins to give way. Have a far above mentality. There are many people that have delayed the move of God in their life because of the type of mindset that they have. There are many people that they have delayed in their wilderness. They have delayed in their valley of the shadow of death for so long because their mindset is wrong. Even God is God, God can never reach you. There are people that have been in poverty for so long, longer, so, so long, not because God is not willing to bless them, but because their mindset is terrible. There are people that should have been settled in their marital homes right now, not because God is not ready to give them marital blessings, but because their mindset is terrible. There are people that God should have given them an international job. But their mindset is terrible. Terrible. You need to perpetually have a far above mentality. A far above mentality. A far above mentality. Hear me very well. To have supernatural results, you must have a superior mindset powered by God. To have supernatural results in your career as a kingdom professional, to have supernatural results in your business as a kingdom entrepreneur, to have supernatural results as a, somebody in ministry, you must have a superior mindset powered by the Holy Ghost. A superior mindset powered by the Word. A superior mindset powered by kingdom materials. A superior mindset powered by the God kind of thinking. And the Bible says, it is no longer I that live, it is Christ that lives in me. How can Christ genuinely live in you? 
and your mindset doesn't rest. It's not corresponding the mind of Christ Jesus. Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. Let's look at Exodus chapter 19 verse 5. Now therefore, if you will in fact obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be my own special possession and a treasure among all people for all the earth is mine. A far above mentality understands that he or she is a special possession of God. A far above mentality understands that he or she is a treasure of God. Therefore, no matter the trouble, no matter the chaotic situation, they are focused on who God is and what God can do. A mind that is far above knows what God has said as far as the promises are concerned. A mind that is far above knows what God has said as far as his covenants are concerned. And live by these promises and live by these covenants no matter the circumstance. And the Bible says, we are seated with Christ, far above principalities and powers. We are seated with Christ, far above principalities and powers. When you understand that Christ is seated far above principalities and power, and you also understand that the Bible says it is no longer you that lives, it is Christ that lives in you. You need to understand that you are the far above all trouble. I want us to understand this very well. This is a kingdom mystery that sometimes if you don't understand critically, you may begin to feel that it sounds like having a positive mindset, but it's bigger than that. It is having a mind that is powered by the Holy Spirit. It's having a mind that is powered by the promises of God. It's having a mind that is powered by the covenants of God. It's having a mind that is powered by total belief in what God can do. It's having a mind that is powered by the word of God. It's having a mind that understands spirit and life. It's having a mind that understands that you are a carrier of God's nature and you're a carrier of the life of God. It is a mind that understands that no matter the challenge you are going through right now, the end result is that you will come out a victor. The devil may go up, the devil may come down, the devil can fly, the devil can do whatever he wants to do. The outcome remains one. I am coming out of this a victor. Having a far above mentality means that you may be married and you have 10 miscarriages. You remain firm in the Lord and you know that after this, only one outcome is there. You will carry your baby. Having a far above mentality means that you may be spending five years today with no job, but the outcome remains the same. You will get your dream job. And the far above mentality means that maybe they have rejected visa from you like 10 times. The outcome remains one. You will get a visa. No matter the situation, you have a mind that is far above the troubles, the challenges on earth. No matter the situation, you are setting your mind on kingdom principles. You are setting your mind on kingdom promises. You are setting your mind on God's covenant. You are setting your mind on what the Lord has said. You are setting your mind on what the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. You are not setting your mind to focus on the circumstance and on things on earth. For you to experience deliverance of all trouble, you need to have a mind that is far above all the trouble. 
because that is the platform that God will stand upon to manifest in your life. Let me tell you something so that you understand how deep this is. There are many times I want to pray for somebody that person's doubting. And the Holy Spirit will tell me, this one is doubting. Sometimes you, you just pray to fulfill all righteousness. That's not a far above mentality. Or I'm pray, praying for somebody and the Holy Spirit tell you that the person is carrying a child from a native doctor. That's not a far above mentality. You are serving two masters at the same time. For God to walk with you, he needs everything about you. Everything about you. He needs your mind to be focused on him and him alone. He needs your mind to be focused on the things of the kingdom alone. Let me tell you something. Your troubles are not that hard for God to do, but God needs to work with you for those troubles to go away. The devil and his demons, they are not that powerful. Are, let me tell you something. There are some challenges that you are going through right now. If you could just grow your mind, two days, one week, they are, they are finished. They are gone. They are totally gone. But we need to grow. We need to grow. Having a far above mentality means that you understand certain things in the scriptures and you believe by them. You understand certain promises. You understand divine perspectives and you stand by those revelations and you begin to enforce them to see them happen in your life. Having a divine, a, a, a divine far above mentality means that you understand Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 where the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but, but Christ who lives in me. Therefore, when you are facing any trouble, you are facing any challenge, you are conscious that it is not you facing that challenge. Jesus Christ is right there with you and you have all it takes to live above that trouble and end that trouble. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ that lives in me. For in the name of Jesus, let this trouble give way. The same Jesus that rebuked the storm lives in me. The same Jesus that healed the woman with the issue of blood lives in me. The same Jesus that commanded blindness to go lives in me. The same Jesus that walked on water lives in me. The same Jesus that defeated death lives in me. In the name of Jesus, you trouble, give way. You have this mindset that it is no longer you that it is Christ that lives in you. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. You live by faith in the name of Jesus. That is how a far above mentality thinks. A far above mentality thinks about John chapter 14 verse 12, where the Bible says, the one who believes in me will also do the work that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. That is a far above mentality. When you understand that when Jesus was about to go, Jesus gave a very strong command and a very strong instruction. Jesus said that anybody who believes in him will do the work that he did. What did Jesus do in the Bible? Jesus raised the dead. You can raise the dead. Jesus fed people. You can feed people. Jesus commanded demons to go. You can do that. Jesus rebuked the storms. You can rebuild your trouble. That is a far above mentality. You have the understanding that when you believe in Christ, and you are in Christ, you will do the works that Jesus did. And in fact, Jesus said, he will do greater works than this. Far above mentality. If you are not operating with this mindset. You are not operating from this dimension. Trouble will mesmerize your life. Trouble will turn up and down. There is no trouble that I cannot pray about. I don't care. I've seen it. I've seen it many times. There are some trouble that when I pray immediately, miracles happen. 
There are someone you need to pray for a week, months, whatever. My mission is simple. I am coming out of this on top. That's my mentality. Oh Lord, deliver me from all trouble. But for that to happen, you need to have a far above mentality where you have the understanding and the consistent mindset that you serve a God that is far above all trouble. Having a far above mentality means that you understand the scripture like Psalms 8 verse 5 to 6 where David was talking. Yet you have made him a little lower than God. That was David that was, you know, having a discussion where the angel was talking, you know. Wait, wait, wait. The angel was like, you, you have made man a little lower than you. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Having a far above mentality means that you understand that you have been crowned with glory and honor. This is Psalms 8 verse 5. And when you begin to study the Bible further in the book of John, Jesus made the same statement. Jesus talking to the Father. Jesus said, the glory and the honor you have given me. I have given to them. A father of both mentality understands that, that your head is not an empty head. Your head has been crowned with glory. Your head has been crowned with honor. And the, and the mind understands in verse 6 that you have been made to have dominion over the works of your hands. A father of both mentality understands that God created you and made you to have dominions over the works of his hands and put all things under your feet. You have that understanding. And you stand on the authority of the word based on revelation and understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you begin to operate in that dimension. I decree and I declare after that today, the glory and the honor that has been released over your life through Christ Jesus will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. The glory and the honor will begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Any trouble, any challenge, any difficulty that has been covering your glory and your honor by authority in the name of Jesus begin to shine according to the will of God in the name of Jesus. Let the glory of your career begin to shine. Let the glory of your business begin to shine. Let the honor that is due you begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. That is your portion. That is your heritage. A far above mentality understands that you have been crowned with glory. Understand that you have been crowned with honor. Understand that God made you to have dominion over the works of his hands. Understand that you have been, all things have been put under your feet. All things, including any form of trouble. Far above mentality. This is very important to understand in the journey of life. God needs you to carry this consciousness, to carry this power, to carry this, because he needs you to carry so he can work with you to manifest that which he desires. A far above mentality understands Galatians chapter 6 verse 17 where the Bible says let no one trouble me for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ a far above mentality understand that let no one trouble me hey 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 let that spiritual wife from today let her not trouble you again in the name of Jesus for you bear in your body, the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to have a both mentality. Let no demon come near you, for you bear the mark of Jesus Christ. Let no demon come around your finances, for you bear the mark of Jesus Christ. Let no demon come against your business. Let no demon come against your career. Let no demon come against your marriage, for you bear 
everything you have got since the mark of the Lord Jesus Christ. A far above mentality understands that. A witch tries to press your neck in the night. You wake up with authority and you put the witch where he belongs. You put the wizard where he belongs. You tell him, hey, do not disturb my sleep. Do not trouble me, for I bear the mark of the Lord Jesus in my body. I am not your property. I am the Lord's property. By that authority and revelation, I cast you out of my life in the name of Jesus. Far above mentality. Let me tell you something. The devil does not like people to understand who they are. Because when you understand this, you can always put the enemy where it belongs. So I'll give you a secret. You cannot be a minister of God or a pastor if you don't have this kind of mentality, first of all. It's, like, it's the foundation of ministry. If not, demons will mesmerize you. Sometimes you are dealing with somebody, they will try to, they will try to frighten you. If you just, if they see small fear inside of you, you are finished. They will, oh my goodness, you are gone. You are gone. But when they row, you row because you know who you are. Let no one trouble me. For I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Ah, we are going to pray. We are, we are praying scriptures today. See how we know we are, we are going to pray. You are going to call that trouble. You are going to tell that trouble. You, you, you call it by name. Spiritual husband, from today, today marks your end. I, by this revelation and by this deliverance, from today, stop troubling me. I bear the mark of Christ. And I don't only bear the mark of Christ. It is no longer I that live. It is Christ that lives in me. When you catch this revelation, demons pack away from you. A far above mentality understands that. A far above mentality understands First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, where the Bible says, But the one who is united and joined to the Lord is one spirit with the Lord. A far above mentality person. When you move around, you understand. I am united with the Lord. I am joined with the Lord. And because I am united with the Lord, I am one spirit with him. And because I am one spirit with him, when I begin to speak, my words are spirit and life. When I begin to speak, my words are not mere water. When I begin to speak, demons pack and go. The sick become healed. Every trouble gives way. Because I am united with the Lord, and I am one spirit, Speak with him. It's not me that speak, because it's no longer I that lives. It is Christ that lives in me. A far above mentality. You move around like a king. You move around like a king, because you are united with the King of Kings. You move around like a god, because you are united with the Almighty God. And the Bible says in the Book of Psalms. He are God. Far above mentality. Far above mentality. If you are going to perpetually live a life above trouble, a life where you consistently see the hand of God in your life and deliverance of God, one of the pathways that must never leave you is have a far above mentality. You are a lady, have a far above mentality. One of the virtues of a virtuous woman, a woman that the Bible says, who find a wife has found a good thing. One of the virtues of a good thing is the one that has a far above mentality. Not that one that's always crying and complaining and begging and being funny for the shop. A wife that the husband is sick, she wakes up midnight and yakata at 3 a.m. until the husband comes back to life and regains good health. Far above mentality. 
Women need a husband that can go on a retreat for, for his wife. Something is going wrong. You go on your knees, say, not my wife, not my family. I am the priest over you. I am the priest over my family. By authority, I begin to command these things to give way. Far above mentality. Far above mentality. Father, thank you for your presence. Far above mentality. You are very conscious that you are united with the Lord and you are one spirit with him. When you open your mouth to speak, you don't just speak grammar. No, 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 no. You don't speak grammar. You don't speak grammar. Your words are spirits and they are life and you are perpetually conscious about it. I carry a far above mentality anytime. And when if it takes me anytime and there's trouble, I will go on voice note and pray for you there and there. I call you and pray for you there and there. I carry God anywhere, anytime, in the day, in the night. Far above mentality. Any trouble that comes, I know I am seated far above. I am united with the Lord. In the day, in the night, I am one spirit with him. First Corinthians chapter 16, verse 17. A kingdom person that has a far above mentality understands Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. The person understands that God delivered you and saved you and called with the holy calling. Not because of your works, but because of his purpose. So you have a far above mentality. You understand that you have already been delivered. According to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, a far above mentality. You understand that God himself has called you with a holy calling. A holy calling means a set apart calling, a unique calling, a unique calling. A, a, a mind, a far above mentality Christian understand that God has called him or her for a purpose and most importantly, God has granted you grace through Christ Jesus. That second Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 towards the end says, and grace which was granted to me in Christ Jesus before the world began. You carried a grace that was granted unto you before you were formed in your mother's womb. There is a grace, and it takes a far above mentality for you to understand that, that you carry a grace that was granted to you through Christ Jesus before the world began. And until you are conscious of this grace that was granted unto you in Christ Jesus, you will live a defeated victim life. Until you move from thinking and behaving like a victim and start thinking, behaving, and talking like a victor, some troubles will destroy your life forever. Fear starts in the mind. And fear that is not taken care of. A far above mentality understands Romans chapter 8 verse 37. A far above mentality understands Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors. And gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us. Through Jesus Christ who loved us and died for us. A far above mentality. You have this mindset. Yet in all these things I am more than a conqueror. In all these things I am more than a conqueror. In all of these troubles I am more than a conqueror. In financial troubles I am more than a conqueror. In marital troubles I am more than a conqueror. In health crisis I am more than a conqueror. In career crisis. In business crisis. In whatever crisis the Bible says yet in all things, all things, all things, not some things, in all things, we are more than the conqueror. 
person that has a far above mentality. You move around with this consciousness and you know that you have the power, you have the authority, you have the anointing to rule and become a conqueror above all things by the authority of the word of God. Whatever is troubling you, may you begin to manifest your victory like a conqueror in the name of Jesus. But the Bible says, we have gained an overwhelming victory in Jesus' name. I decree and I declare, enter your season of victory over your troubles in the name of Jesus. Enter your season of victory in the name of Jesus. Far above mentality. After today, all of us, needs to enter this dimension of far above mentality. And we will begin to see how testimonies will begin to flow into our life in a different dimension. Because our mindset has become a legal ground when God can use to create supernatural manifestation, supernatural moves. The Lord needs your mind. The Lord needs your mind. I was talking with somebody just before this meeting. And I said, if I'm preparing for a meeting and I'm very happy, my spirit is happy, I'm full of joy and all of that, the, the Holy Spirit moves different that day because the Holy Spirit likes a joyful and a happy environment. Yes, if you are that kind of person, you are full of anger, jealousy, uh, um, funny, funny attitudes. You, 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 you will never see the, the the real manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Oh, there are some things for for me. I will never get angry about because I prefer my fellowship with the Holy Spirit than those things in life. Because the Holy Spirit is my is the greatest person that I prefer to have than any other problem. The Holy Spirit, if you want one of the conditions to be a carrier of his presence and the Holy Ghost in particular, have the right personality, have the right attitude, have the right mindset. You can, you can pray for the Holy Ghost for 300 days fasting and prayers. If you are wrong in your mindset, you are full of anger, you are full of jealousy, you are full of envy, you are full of pride, forget about the Holy Spirit, let me tell you. You are full of wickedness. Forget. You, you need to go and you need you need to ask him, Holy Spirit, purge, purge me, transform me, before you begin to see a manifestation in a certain dimension. That is very critical. That is very critical. A far above mentality. Ah, somebody, you are entering your season of victory in the name of Jesus. You are entering your season of victory in the name of Jesus. Having a far above mentality means that you understand Revelation chapter 5 verse 10, where the Bible says that, and have made us kings and priests unto God, and we shall reign on earth. Having a far above mentality, you understand that you have been made a king unto God, and because you have been made a king unto God, Part of your heritage is that you shall reign on earth. The last statement says, and we shall reign on earth. Reigning on earth includes reigning above troubles. Reigning on earth includes reigning above challenges. Reigning on earth includes reigning above witches and wizards. Reigning on earth includes reigning against demons. Reigning on earth includes reigning against spiritual wives and husbands. Reigning against failures by the authority of this world. Begin to reign where you are in the name of Jesus. Begin to reign above every trouble in the name of Jesus. Far above mentality. You have been, you understand that you have been made a king unto God and a priest unto God. And you have been given a mandate and an authority to reign on earth. You move around with this consciousness, with this divine kingdom presence and consciousness. When problems appear, you begin to speak from that realm and from that dimension. There is one thing 
One primary way to develop a far above mentality is to keep yourself on the world with the help of the Holy Spirit. You need to devour the Bible. You need to eat the Bible. You need to consume the Bible. Not only reading like stories, no, read with the help of the Holy Spirit. That's why when you, before you even read the Bible, you need to pray for some few minutes. Just ask the Holy Ghost help me. Holy Ghost, open my mind to see some deep revelations. Holy Spirit, take over me. Take over me. Take me into a higher realm as I study the word of the Father. Because you, you there are people that read the Bible and they see on the English language. But there are some people that when they read, they see the kingdom revelations. And it is kingdom revelation that produces far above mentality, not English language. That's why if you read on your own, you read stories in English. To some people, when they hold the Bible, what they see is book. But to some people, it's a spiritual book that causes terror in the kingdom of darkness. Far above mentality. So today, we are going to pray with this revelation of far above mentality. We are going to pray. I want you to pray with this consciousness that you are seated far above. We have taken time to just touch a bit of what it means to be far above. These are just a few, very few, not even up to 1% of all the scriptures that demonstrate how we are far above with this revelation, with this understanding and this consciousness. We're going to pray. We are going to pray. Please be connected. Be connected. If you are ready to pray, comment, it's time to pray. If you are set to pray, comment, it's time to pray. It's time to pray prayer with a far above mentality mindset. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Just unmute your mic and begin to pray, begin to worship him. Unmute your mic and begin to worship him. Unmute your mic and begin to worship him. Your mic and begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Worship him with the conscious God and worship him with the power of God. Father, I worship him with the word that I have spoken. Lord, I worship you for your word. Father, we worship you for your mercy. Father, we worship you. Worship you, Lord, for lifting up my spirit. Father, we worship you. And every Lord for revealing your word. Father, Lord, for discernment. Father, I worship you. Worship you, Father. I worship you. 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 I Father, the 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 the
Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, as we were worshiping, the Holy Spirit just ministered a new beginning. A new beginning. It means a season for a new beginning is being unveiled. Whoever is connected by faith, just believe it. A new, if what if it is one of your expectations, the atmosphere has been opened. The grace for a new beginning is being released. A new beginning. I don't know what new beginning you are seeking for. I don't know what new beginning you are seeking for. Holy Spirit, for the clarity. A new beginning. This is a new beginning from constant failure, constant failure, constant failure, constant failure. You have been you have been doing something in particular. You have been failing, but it's your heart desire, and you have been failing, and you have been failing. There's something that somebody you have been doing. You have been trying to get it. You desire it, but you have been failing it. You know, like this is somebody. You, you, your dream is you, you 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 desire to travel out of your country, and you have tried many times, several embassies. You have been failing. A new beginning, grace for a new beginning, grace for a new season. Yes, yes. Somebody just make a prayer point, Father. Release unto me the grace for a new beginning. Yes, make that prayer point. Make that prayer point. Grace for a new beginning. Father, grace for a new beginning. Release into my life, Lord, the grace for a new beginning. I receive 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 the grace for a new beginning. Yes, somebody pray, 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 pray. That's a prayer point. I receive the grace for a new beginning. I receive the grace for a new beginning. The grace is being released right now. I receive the grace for a new beginning. A grace for a new beginning. Yes, a spiral above mentality. Yes, a spiral above mentality. Because you have activated the spiral above mentality. A spiral above mentality that is picking out the failures you have had in the past. A grace for a new beginning is being released. Father, I receive the grace for a new beginning. In the name of Jesus. A grace for a new beginning is given. A grace for a new beginning is given. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. The next prayer point we are going to pray. It's from Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, where the Bible says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So uh, you're going to be praying prophetic declaration. It is no longer I that lives. Uh, it is Christ that lives in me. Therefore, any trouble, I command you to give way in the name of Jesus. It is no longer I that lives. Uh, it is Christ that lives in me. Any trouble, I command you to give way in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. The Bible says in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 that the life I live now I live by the faith of my Son. Let every challenge give way. Let every trouble give way. In the name of Jesus. Let every challenge give way. Let every trouble 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 give way. Let every tr
in Jesus name now hear this very well this scripture about it is no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me sometimes I like to break it down deeper where I begin to imagine can Jesus Christ be sick no Therefore, I can no longer, I cannot be sick because it is not I who lives, it is Jesus Christ who lives in me. That is a far above mentality. You are operating from a different consciousness and a different realm. Because when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have genuinely gone through the salvation protocol, when you operate, your mouth and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord and you believe in your heart that he died on the cross for your sin and you surrender to him and you live for him automatically it is not only you living the difference is some people are not conscious of this dimension of the kingdom therefore they live as if they are living on their own we are going to pray this again and I want you to pray and to be specific. If there is a particular challenge, if there's a particular problem, pray and mention, it is no longer I who lives, it is Christ who lives in me. Therefore, by the authority of this revelation, I come the of Jesus give way. Because Jesus ended every challenge he faced. Jesus ended every difficulty he encountered. Jesus casted out every demon that he faced. In the name of Jesus, by the revelation that it is no longer I who lives, it is Christ who lives in me. In Jesus' name, I command this to give way. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Is there get the in the name of Jesus, call my consciousness. in Jesus' name, amen. We're going to pray from Psalms 8, verse 5. We're going to pray from Psalms 8, verse 5. The Bible says that you and I have been crowned with glory and honor. We have been, God is so mindful of us. When you read verse 4, God is so mindful of us. God loves us so much that he has crowned us with glory and honor. So you are going to pray with a far above understanding and consciousness that you are a carrier. There's a crown of your head that carries glory and honor. So you'll be 
praying and commanding the manifestation. Let your glory begins to manifest. Let the honor overthrow. Oh my goodness. When you are not, when your honor is now, when, have you ever imagined what makes somebody, why will somebody go and look for millions and buy a car and give somebody? Have you ever imagined that? Or you hear that somebody has gone and built the house and give somebody as a gift. Or you tell that even in a husband and wife relationship. If you don't carry honor on your head as a wife, your husband will just be seen like a normal woman and he will not honor you. Same as a husband. When honor is on your head as a man, when you are honored, that husband's honor is on you. Your wife will honor you beyond the man, the, the human being that he is. It's the same in career, in business. When glory, when the glory, nobody resists glory. Nobody resists honor. There are some troubles that you are still constantly going through because your honor is not shining. Your, your honor has not come alive. Your glory is not alive. You are going to pray, begin to pray, begin to activate. Oh God, by authority, by revelation, let my honor begin to shine. Let my glory begin to shine. Let the honor, let my honor become visible. Let my honor become visible. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. Let oh, them Lord, by my God, authority and revelation is the Lord of my honor, by the authority and revelation of God, I stand on the glory of the name of Jesus Christ and make a true command let my glory and revelation begin to shine in the Lord's name of Jesus. Let the crown of the glory of Father wherever I come may shine in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, not so Thank you, Father, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, Jesus. As I will let people see you. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, I have prayed on my sins. Let my glory be glory be shine. Let my honor be shine. May I be honored, O oh Lord Jesus. Give me my honor. Thank you, Father. Give me my honor, O Lord Jesus. For the revelation of Jesus Christ. Somebody In the name of Jesus, Tabe on a ring, you need to pray for glory. You need to pray for glory. Your glory needs to shine. Tabe on the ring. Your glory needs to shine. There is a dimension of rest. There is a dimension of testimonies that you will only enter when the glory over your head begins to shine. Let that glory begin to manifest from today in the name of Jesus. I would like to encourage you to take some time and pray for your glory. Let your glory show forth. Let your glory show forth. Oh Lord, let this glory, my Father, my Maker, this glory have crowned over my head. Let my glory become visible in the name of Jesus. Take time and begin to pray. And Bosco, you need to pray for honor. Honor, honor. Your, your honor needs to come alive. Honor, you need honor over your head. You need honor over your head. Honor, honor, honor. Men needs to see you and honor you. Women need to see you and honor you. In the marketplace, you enter an office. They honor you because of what you carry. 
When you carry honor, when your name is mentioned somewhere, the room shakes. Honor. Bosco, pray for honor. Oh God. The honor you have crowned upon my head. In the name of Jesus, then my honor become visible. Let men and women begin to honor me in the name of Jesus. Let your honor begin to manifest. Let your honor begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Marvin, pray for honor. Men and women will honor me. Pray for honor. You can be gifted and lack honor and people will not notice you. Nobody honors you for who you are. Nobody honors you for what you carry because you need honor. Honor to be real, to be visible. Have you ever gone to a place to stay where they treat some people in a special way? It's as if you are on. They did not see you. Something is covering your honor. Let my honor become visible today by fire. Let my honor become visible today by fire. Other person, if you have noticed that you struggle to get noticed, you do things and you struggle to get noticed, you need your glory and your honor to shine. Go and pray that prayer for you. Honor. Show me a man that men and women honor. I will show you a man who can never be stranded in life. Honor. Yes, Lord. Yes, Holy Spirit. Baptize somebody with your honor. Activate the crown of honor. Holy Ghost, activate the crown of honor. Activate the crown of honor. If I mention your name, lift up your hands, please. Quickly, lift up your hands quickly. Let me pray your instructor. If I mention your name for honor and glory. And whoever you want to align yourself, I will tell you guys, the woman with the issue of blood, she was not on Jesus' plan originally. She was not there. But she inserted herself in Jesus' plan and she touched Jesus by force and collected her intervention. Oh no, lift up your hands. Kabbalah Zikada. Holy Ghost, touch somebody. Activate the crown of honor over their heads. Holy Ghost, activate the crown of glory over their heads in the name of Jesus. Jesus died so that they may be honored and glorified. Jesus said, oh my father, the glory and the honor you have given me, I have transferred unto them. One belongs to Christ. And part of that heritage is glory and honor. Holy Ghost, activate your honor by your power. Activate your honor and glory by your power in the name of Jesus. Yes. Honor that will set you apart in the marketplace. Honor that will set your business apart in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to pray. When you read Psalms 8, Psalms 8 verse 6, the Bible says, you made him, him here is you. That is still a discussion happening in the heavens. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Do you know that part of your heritage is to have dominion over the works of God's hand? Everything God created, you have dominion over it. Do you know that you are the last creation of God? God created everything before he created you and I. We rule over God's creation. And that is part of having a far above mentality. You are a ruler. Dominion over the works of his hands, my father. And that same verse says, you have put all things under his feet. Yes. You have put all things under his feet. You are so mindful of man. You are so mindful of mindful of human beings. You are so mindful of those who believe in you that you have put all things under their feet. I stand on this revelation. You are going to pray. I stand on this understanding and revelation. 
I begin to command that which is not right in my life to begin to go right. That which is not of God to begin to move in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray with that understanding. Begin to pray that you have dominion over the work of you. Begin to pray that Jesus, I have dominion. Begin to pray with understanding Somebody pray, somebody pray, somebody pray. Pray with the understanding that you have the power above mentality. Pray with the understanding that you have the power above mentality. You have dominion over the work of the land. Things that be under your feet in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, after today, everything that is not of God will operate under your feet in the name of Jesus. After today, that thing that is not of God in your life, you are trampling over it forever. In the name of Jesus, after today, you begin to walk in dominion in the name of Jesus. Last prayer point. And the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 17, Let no one trouble me, for I bear in my body the mark of the Lord Jesus. You are going to pray. I want you here to call anything that is troubling you by name. You call it you. You can no longer trouble me. For I now understand who I am. I Because I bear the mark of Christ in my body. And because Christ lives in me. You cannot trust. It's an authority. It's a authoritative kingdom statement. Let no one trouble me. Oh my goodness. Like you can wake up from sleep and you see a witch standing in the corner. You point at the witch and say, from today, never trouble me again. I know who I am in Christ. I bear the mark of Christ in my body. One, two, Jesus Christ dwells in me. Therefore, you have no place. So you are going to pray this prayer point. Let no one trouble me. Why there's no one? Replace it with any trouble you are going through. And today marks the end of that trouble in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray with that authority. Begin to pray with that revelation. I bear by the revelation, by the revelation, I bear the mark of God in me. The life I live is Christ that lives in you and not I that live. So you ancestors, Father Lord, you have I know no power. Father Lord, I know my crush name. you by the authority of the enemy. Every spirit against marriage and God has crushed you by the authority of the enemy. I bear the heart of the mother. You ancestors that know because I pay the blame of the trouble. I pay the mark of my husband that I separate myself from you and I share the trouble. I spread myself because I know my Lord is rich. The Bible says that I'm doing this. Let not you trouble you. Let not one trouble you. Let not one trouble you. Trouble, 
in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. If you are sick in your body, raise up your hand. Put your hand where you are feeling pains, where you are sick. If you are sick in your body, indicate. Put up, just put your hand wherever you are feeling pains, your head, your stomach, wherever. Yes, Father. You are here because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You are here because you believe that there is a God in heaven that answers when we call upon you. Because you are in Christ and you bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree and I declare, let that sickness from today no longer trouble you in the name of Jesus because you bear the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command that sickness to give way in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, by his stripes you are healed. In Jesus' name, be healed in Jesus' name. Let every pain give way, for your body bears the marks of Jesus Christ. Pain can no longer trouble you. Let every Sickness give way for your body bear the mark of Jesus Christ. Let that sickness give way now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Healing is taking place. Healing is taking place. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. You are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Father, thank you. Just lift up your voice and begin to thank God. Begin to appreciate God. Thank you, Lord. Today has been an awesome day. Thank I give you, you all the glory. Take all the honor. Thank Take you, Lord. Take all the glory. 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 In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Welcome. Today is the last day of our March fasting and prayers. And uh, I want to celebrate you all for taking time to seek the face of God for these three days. And of course, for always believing in God and believing in the ministry and waking up at 3.30, 3 a.m. to be part of the prayer session. God bless you. And I know that God is doing wonderful things in Jesus' name. Testimonies after testimonies is your portion. Your life is from glory to glory in Jesus' name. God bless you and of course see you when next we're going to have our master class. Of course, you know that we have teachings and then we have prayers like this. Stay active in the WhatsApp group. Invite people to be part of the community. Remember, we live to glorify all of these things that we do is to glorify God and to pull people as many as possible to the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Be an ambassador, invite people, spread what the Lord is doing here and be part of what God is doing in a special way. Don't only be a passerby, don't only be a, if somebody still on the fence, be active. It's a fellowship for everybody, okay? God bless you. Take care of yourselves and remember in this last day, 
that you're fasting and praying, find time to pray within the day. Don't only stay without eating. Find time to pray, find time to study the word and to pray. And of course, God will always do that which only him can do. God bless you and take care of yourself. Cheers.